This is uh, lecture nine of a pure math course in finite group theory at junior and senior level. And the first author of the text that I'm using for this course is Barnard. And here's the text. I do this every lecture or lecture set, as I call them. <coughs> um, the, it's in the Teach Yourself series. And the title of the book is Mathematical Groups, and you can find details about this book, how to get it, price, stuff like that, and about the course in general from this website. So, Prof, as short for Professor, Prof Hugo de Garris, that's my name, dot wordpress dot, dot com. Right? So, uh, today's lecture, the main theme is functions, or as commonly known, mappings. Uh, they're pretty much the same same idea, so you know, if you're not familiar with the concept of functions in this formal sense, uh, just think of mappings. Uh, they're pretty much the same. <coughs> okay, so um, what is a mapping or a function? Well, it's a kind of pairing between uh, an element of one set and uh, another element of a different set. So it's sort of a pair. So you have like little, little a belongs to a big set a, and element little b belongs to another set, different set, b, and they get paired somehow. So uh, a function then, this, this f here, uh, that's the assigner or the pair maker or whatever you want to call it. Uh, technical, technical word is just a, a, a function. Right? So this function takes this little a and maps it to little b. So, so here it is here. So uh, you input your little a, put it into your f. You, you, could look, you could look at f like a box, like a black box, if you like. So input is little a, and what comes out is uh, the element in set b that uh, gets mapped to a. So this, this, this little a gets mapped to b. Uh, I don't know. Take, take an example, you're at a dance, okay? And the MC, the Master of Ceremonies, uh, calls out to all the men and women in the dance hall, uh, choose your partners! And so, you know, a lot of mingling and people choose partners. So, uh, amongst the set of males, uh, John, and in the set of females, uh, Jane. So you could say that uh, John, uh, a member of the set of males, or men, uh, gets mapped to Jane, who is a member of the set of females or women, okay? so it's just sort of a sort of a pairing. Or, um, right now, uh, let's start getting a bit more formal. Uh, in especially in this text, uh, the technical words given to these two sets. Uh, so the set that you start from, and uh, often often called just the starting set. Uh, the technical word is domain, right? domain, and the set that you map to uh, call, is technically called the codomain, or often more informally, just the target set. Or another, well, there, there are lots of terms. <laughs> another possibility is the, the the from set, and this would be the to, not not the number two, but just to, the to set. So. Uh, in the text, um, Barnard, he, he tends to use both of these. So the, the domain and the codomain, and the starting set and the target set. Okay? Now, uh, there are a few other little definitions. In fact, there are quite a few definitions in this, uh, this, this lecture, this lecture set. Um, the, so if this, this is a little a, a member of this big set A, and it gets mapped to uh, a, different, a member of another set, Big B. And let's say this little mem uh, this member of Big B is Little B. Now, that member there is said to be, there's a definition here, is said to be the, uh, the image of A. Okay, so this, this little B here is the image of this one. So an image then, by definition, is the element that gets mapped to, to go. Right? And 
then this so this little a here would be the um, element that gets mapped from. Okay? So you're mapping from this one to this one. Uh, so from and to sort of intuitive and fairly obvious. All right. Uh, so now we've got a feel for what uh, a, a function is. Uh, this this mapper, if you like. Yeah, so uh, the form definition of a function, in, in this sense, uh, has three three parts. And you can probably guess what they are. Well, one's one's the starting set, right? The, the domain, call it uh, A, you know, set A. The other one, of course, is uh, the target set or the co-domain, call it B, right? So that's the second second part of these three. And the third one is, is this rule, and that's sort of a bit vague, um, this rule F that uh, takes each and every, and that's important, uh, this, this function here has to map every member of A. If you leave one out, that's not defined. So uh, this, this is an important point. That function maps every member of your starting set, of your domain, okay? And what does it map it into? Into another set, uh, B, to, to members of B. Now, uh, here's, here's the specification here of, of your F. So for each, for each member of A, that's what this, more formally it's saying, uh, you know, for all little A, be, you know, member, so for all members, for each member, belonging to your starting set, your, your domain. Uh, this F, this mapper, this uh, assigner, or whatever you want to call it, uh, it, it maps to just one member of B. Right? Just one. So th this mapping, if you like, is, uh, is not one to many, or one to two. So. Um, so for each one of these, it maps to just one member of, of your B, of your codomain, of your target set. Right? Now that's also important. And this mapping is generally represented like this. So here's, here's your, uh, your function, your F, your mapper, your assigner, or whatever, uh, colon, and then you have your two sets. So you say that this function maps this set, your starting set, your domain, into uh, this set, your target set, or your co-domain. Okay? Now, you will see this in high-level mathematics everywhere. Right? It's very, very common. Um, and so, in a sense, this, uh, this particular lecture is... Um, basic, like it's, it's more than just important, right? It's, uh, it just gets used all the time, this, this concept of mapping, so uh, very important. All right, now uh, let's, let's do a couple of examples. So now, now that we know what a function is with its three main parts, the starting set, the target set, and a function, or if you want to use the more uh, formal terminology that's, that's used by Barnard in his book, you have uh, a domain, you know, a domain set, and a codomain that, that you map to, and a function f. So let, let's do some examples. Uh, for example, e.g., so uh, this function maps the reals to the reals. And what is f? What is, what is that mapper, that assigner? Well, it, it takes uh, this x here. x would be a member of your first set, right? so it's just any real, so this x here is any real from your starting set, your, your domain, and it maps it to uh, a member of your co-domain, your, your target set. Right? So, you, so in effect, you see this, and you just say, oh, okay, it's, it's a function mapping reals to reals. So your input is x and your output, in a sense, if you look on f as a kind of black box input output, so your f maps x to the square of x, right? Uh, okay. Um, here's a, another function. Let's just call it g. And uh, the input, the the starting set, 
is the union, this is the union here, uh, using set terminology, go, go, go away several lectures back. So the union of the positive reals and the, the set uh, with one element, uh, the number zero. Okay. So in other words, uh, what is this set here? Well, it's the set of all non-negative, uh, that's just another way of saying this, it's the set of all non-negative reals. Okay, because it's the positives plus zero, right? And you map that to the reals. Now, why, why have you chosen to do this? Well, because the function itself is the square root of x. Now, uh, that's defined if x is naught or positive, but uh, this function is not defined, if you think about it, it's not defined if x is negative. And why is that? Well, because you're mapping to the reals, not to the big C, you're not ma mapping to the complex numbers, right? you're mapping to R. So if this x here is not uh, non-negative, so if it's not either positive or zero, then uh, this, this, oops, sorry, this, <laughs> sorry, this should be G, that should be G. <coughs> okay. So um, this G, this function here, this G here, is not, not defined. Okay. Now, how about some non-examples uh, where, where the function uh, supposedly defined, but when you go into detail, you find that's not defined, and it just fails as a definition, as 